and without him might be enslaved and without him my life would be hopeless but with Jesus thank God Charles Dickens once wrote a novel called A Tale of Two Cities. But if the story of Madeline Lefebvre's life were written, it would have to have four different stages. His early life singing with his gospel music family, his years of rebellion and fame as a rock star, his return to God and expressions of that as a contemporary Christian artist, and finally, a return to his roots. I really came to know Milan best in this last section of his life and his passionate love for Jesus and for life. So to start from the beginning, this is an early morning television broadcast where a young man had a hard time finding the drum set. I woke up with joy in my soul, got a near my Lord had control. Urias and Eva May were the parents of this wonderful family. And a few years ago, I had the opportunity to talk to Mylon and his mother and his brother Maurice and Jimmy and Rex about the early days of a gospel singing family. Mama had, and I think Dad, if he was here, would tell you that Mama's talent was the driving force behind the group in those years. Her personality, she was the one that communicated with everybody. But Daddy was smart enough to know that she was better than him. And he would stand back there and be quiet. And he basically managed things. Dad was a hard guy in some ways, but he was a good provider for his family, and he loved us, and he showed it. But right before he died, uh, I was at the hospital. He had cancer. And uh, I was away from the Lord at that time and uh, still using a lot of drugs. And I went down to the hospital and uh, I would go down there and get him in his wheelchair and roll him, take him outside if it was pretty, you know, and just hang out with him and just talk to him, something I hadn't done in 20 years. And uh, one day I went down there and he asked me to read the Bible to him. They had this Gideon Bible in there in the hospital. And he asked me to read the Bible to him and I didn't know what to read. And I still don't know what I read him because when I started trying to read the Bible to him, I looked over at him and I'd never seen him cry but one other time in my whole life. And tears welled up in his eyes. And uh, I remember that I got emotional and tears welled up in my eyes. And I said, Daddy, I'm sorry I wasn't a better son. And my daddy reached out and took my arms and said, Son, I'm sorry I wasn't a better daddy, but I love you and we buried the hatchet and we forgave each other. And we fell in love and as an adult to get to fall in love with my daddy and to know that he's in heaven and to know that uh, I'll see him again someday. The Lord has done a miracle in that when I remember my dad, all my memories are good. I had nothing but heartaches and trouble. I was living my lifetime I had nothing but doubts and confusion. Now I have everything. I have everything I need to make me happy. I have Jesus to show. Up until this time, Mylon basically did the music that his parents wanted him to do. 
And after he left the family, I'll be honest with you, I had very little contact with him. I knew he was soaring high in the secular field with some of the biggest names in the rock and roll world. And I can remember the time that he called me and he said, Bill, I need to talk with you. He said, uh, I've had a real experience with the Lord. I got on a plane and went to Atlanta and uh, he told me about his born again experience. And I looked in his eyes and I knew that he was serious. At this time, he was a janitor at the Mount Perrin Church of God in Atlanta because that's all he could get. And his pastor did a wise thing. He just wanted to see if it was real. And it wasn't long until the old gospel days came back to him in a new way with a group called Broken Heart. And he took the music of his childhood, put a little beat to it, made it a little bit more exciting for him and for a whole lot of kids. I don't think I've ever seen anyone with a more passionate call to bring people to Jesus. And he did this every night with kids all over the country, all over the world. So saves my soul, and lifts my voice. He makes me glad, I will rejoice. Man, I hope you're hearing the words of these songs. I don't have to make myself rejoice. Do you understand that? He makes me glad. I choose to rejoice. I will rejoice. The world can do what it wants to, but I'm going to rejoice in the Lord God Almighty, the King of the armies of heaven. Amen. I don't know what you've been doing with your life lately. We came here tonight to love you and can and to encourage you and to edify you and to lift you up in the Lord. The word says when we lift up Jesus, that he'll draw all men unto himself. When I was little, my parents were gospel singers. They told me all about Jesus. And I believed them, by the way. They took me to church. I believed them. They told me that Jesus was the son of God. I believed them. They told me that God had raised him from the dead. I believed them. But you know, I took everybody else's word for it, but I didn't ever take God's. I hope that settles in your heart, man, because you don't have to take anybody's word for it but his. He has written it all down just for me and you. And the word of God, by the way, is alive. It doesn't matter whether you understand it or not. I'm going to tell you one simple bottom line fact. If you'll let the word of God become a daily part of your life, God Almighty will cleanse you. He will take away from you the desire to do things that are opposed to the will of God. And he will give you a desire to do things that will give you joy and peace and love and patience. Faithfulness, gentleness, kindness. He'll give you self-control. God Almighty will give you the attributes of his son, Jesus. More of Jesus, less of me. By his power. Kids love this group all over the country. And maybe his biggest fan 
was his little daughter, Summer. This is a miner that I knew, always calling people to come on home, and he did it with conviction. It was his heart. And speaking of home, when I told him that we were going to do a video honoring a lot of his friends from the past, and especially his mama, he said, when are you going to do it? I'll be there. Mylon was a Georgia boy, and he had lived in Atlanta most of his life. But he moved to Fort Worth, Texas to be part of the ministry of Kenneth Copeland. He still loved music, but teaching and preaching became a passion for him. Mylon loved life. He embraced every day with joy, whether he was enjoying nature, riding motorcycles through the mountains, or ministering through his podcast. He and his wife, Christy, lived fully alive. But God used those yes, people. He, did. he cleansed them from all unrighteousness. Yes. That's what he did for me when I got born again. And mm -hmm. that's what he did for you when you got born again. And if you're not born again, it is so easy. All you have to do, the Bible says, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and I'm here to witness and testify that he, is pro he has proved it to me. Uh -huh. He has changed our life. He has proven his love yes, all day, yes. every day. Yes. He proves how much he loves me. Mm -hmm. He proves his miraculous word to me. And he's in love with you, man. He'll prove it at your house if you'll trust him. Mylon attended many of our videos and he always had an encouraging word. Well, y'all all know me. This is my first year. I've been watching the video and every once in a while they have the old folks and I'm only 65, but I'm talking about the old folks. And it's, my mom was always on it. She's been on all of these, and this is my first time to do one that she's not on. She went to heaven last year. And she's got her award now, and this thing's about giving thanks. So I just want to give thanks for being raised in a gospel singing home and, and uh, hearing the good news. The gospel means the good news. And I think we sing music's good. I like all kind of music, but... Uh, the music that'll set you free has got the truth in it. And this music we sing, it's not just music. It's, it's got the gospel, which means good news. And then what is the good news? The good news is that God's not mad at anybody. He's not trying to get anybody. If he was, we'd be got, wouldn't we? <laughs> the good news is the Lord is good. 
and his mercy endures forever. And his mercy is fresh every morning. He didn't run out. If he needed some yesterday, he's got some more for tomorrow. That's good news. Say it with me. The Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. He said, I came that you'd have life and life more abundant. The will of God is to bless you so you can be a blessing. Amen? Amen. Who wants to be a blessing? Amen. Then you are. Praise God. You bless me. I'm so thankful to have you as brothers and sisters, and I sure do love y'all, and I pray for you all the time. I hope y'all are praying for me. God bless you. Faithfulness and gratitude were always part of Mylan's testimony after he came back to the Lord. You couldn't talk to Mylan very long without him telling you how grateful and thankful he was for God's mercy and forgiveness. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thy own dear presence cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings on mine and ten thousand beside A few weeks ago, the vocal band went down to Fort Worth, Texas to the Believers Conference to do a concert on a Friday night. I went in a night early so I could spend the evening with Mylon and Christy. We had a lovely time at a Mexican restaurant. The next night, we did the concert and we closed out with Because He Lives, as last time I was with my friend. How sweet to hold newborn baby and feel the cry and the joy that he gives but greater still the calm assurance Wes you sing that line and sing it like Bessel would want you to sing it. <laughs> she'd say, belt it out. We're not people, we're not people of fear, she'd say. We are people of faith. And we can face uncertain days. Sing it with because. 